Uh, I'm going to leave that there. We're starting right on time. Uh, what time is that? What time? You, yeah. What time is it, Mr. Wolf? Am I supposed to have an answer for that one? I don't know. It's that game. You know, six o'clock and then he takes it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. What games are you playing? What time is it, Mr. No, Wolf? it's not. I don't. Well, no, it's the, it's the goddamn uh, kids game. Well, that's it. You know, that's an one intro. Versus, <laughs> one person stays at the, stays uh, like at, at somewhere with their back turned, and then the rest of the, the kids. You know, you're in class. No. Like, what time is it, Mr. Wolf? He's like, it's six o'clock. And you take six steps, oh. and they go, "What time is it, Mr. Wolf?" And he goes, three o'clock. You take three more steps, and he goes, "What time is it?" Mr. Wolf? He goes, "It's lunchtime," and then he has to chase you, okay, and catch whoever he can. Mm. How do we get on this? <laughs> it's 48 seconds of the episode. I don't even know how we. Well, got like the this. only game I remember playing as a kid was uh, Heads Up Seven Up, when I. The game was dope. And I barely remember how to do it. I just remember, like, there's a cheap way to take a nap because you don't have to put your head up. Yeah, they touch your head and you're going to lift your hand, hand or something. Yeah, something, something weird like that. I don't, I don't remember the rules. Neither do I. I just remember it was like, sweet. And I'd be happy to put my head down and be like, don't touch me. <laughs> you know the one where it was like it was like the killer? Like, you had a circle and the one person had, he would wink. Yeah. And when they wink, you die. And then the detective had to figure out who it was. That's kind of like Mafia, kind of like Clueish. Yeah, that's what's called yeah. Mafia. Right? Well, Maf- Mafia just... became like. A later version of whatever that was, because I remember playing that as a kid. Actually, no the the one that was like in class the the the, the schoolyard game that dominated when I was a kid was the red ass. Red ass was nuts. Red ass and like salad. I don't know salad. Yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah of I don't. Salad. I yeah, don't yeah. know why it has that name. And anyone that knows, I don't knows, know why, but it would just it would just pick up any time. Yes, and, slide, slide, slide. Slide. and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's regional because I don't think anybody across the way is playing what we're playing, calling it salad. But those that know know. Um, it's funny that it's gotta, be some, it's gotta be something else called something else. Yeah, it's, it's stupid. It's like kick the can, basically. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. or five hole. Yeah, because dice is called. Like, there's different names for dice. Bones. Oh yeah, we yeah. Did that. and then like quarters and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's right. You get close to the wall. Yeah, there was that one, and there was the the crazy kids that used to do the knuckles with it. And I was like, I don't know, how you guys play that shit. Yeah, I don't. The things we did in high school when we were teenage mutants, ninja. Oh, right, right. Tykes? Tykes? Is that what they call them? Teenage Mutant Ninja Tykes? Well, I guess I guess that's double. The teenagers and Tykes would be contradiction because Tykes are like kids, right? Tykes. Mutant. You little, you little Tyke? Not Dyke. Tyke. I'm, I'm trying to see how much of this is going to make the actual episode. <laughs> Probably all of it. Definition of Tyke. Oh, you're really going in. A small child, especially a cheeky or mischievous one. See? Are you going to look up the definition of dyke? Oh, an unpleasant or coarse man is also <laughs> tyke. That's so, that doesn't make any sense. That it's got two completely different. But I was thinking of the, of the mischievous child. Is this little tyke up to his tricks again? And I was thinking of the cantankerous man. The cantank. What do you want a definition of dyke? Back at it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like we never left. I was hoping you going to let that one die. But oh well. Coke and dyke. Dyke and coke. We are D Lethal Weapons. Hey, Dang. Hey, Coke. Why do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hate office work? Why do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hate office work? Because they can't stand the shredder. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not bad. I was trying to hold that one because he's actually not in either one of these movies, but allegedly. <laughs> sorry, sorry. He's not a main player in either one. He's referenced in both of them, but. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about that in extras. Um, the reason I'm not laughing is because we did way more work on Ninja Turtle, like, <laughs> like study a depth as opposed to just enjoying these movies for what they were. Uh, yeah. If you know anything about Coke and Dank, we are an unofficial official Ninja Turtle podcast. So anytime we get a chance to talk about basically our favorite property coming up as a kid, we will we will talk about adolescents, tykes, teenagers, dykes. Because I guess we are. Don't we qualify as dykes? Unless you didn't look up the definition. If it says female, I did. I did, but I closed the tab because 
I didn't want to go there, but a long wall or embankment built to prevent flooding from the sea. That we definitely prevent a ditch flooding. Or water course. Yeah. You would ditch and I'm a water course. So But then it's also a slang term. <laughs> <laughs> We decided to squeeze together two of maybe the top. We'll find out when we rank them, if we rank them. Uh, animated Ninja Turtle movies that are kind of yep. on the forefront right now. Just released is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And like you were saying, it's always been 20 years since we got TMNT 2007. That's crazy. Yes. That's crazy. Because I hadn't watched this since 2007. Wow. So watching it again, I was like holy it's been a long time and there's there's a lot of parallels there's a lot of dips and there's a lot of things that don't make sense but here we are to give you the tail of the tape uh we made a little scorecard i'm going to figure out definitively which of these is the best animated ninja turtle movie also i just want to say too we you, we love the turtles we talk about them no. kind of a lot it's been a year since we have which i didn't realize so the last one we did was august 2022 which was the uh, Northampton, good, arc analysis. Good run, number thirty-three. That's crazy. I didn't realize it had been a full year. Well, I, <laughs> how dare we? We used to do turtle content like every like eight to ten weeks. We, we we didn't like anything else. We're like, well, you want to do another Marvel movie? Like, nah. Let's. You want to do turtles? Uh, so like, yes. Let's read this run. Yes. Been, so this is usually how we kick start it too, right? Like, yeah. You'll be seeing X Men coming from us soon. You'll be seeing turtles coming from us soon. You'll be seeing. Uh, the Max, I'm going to throw that out there because it's coming fairly soon. We've been talking about it for a long time. I can't wait to talk about the Max. So we're, we're, we're digging in our bag of like, oh, yo, we haven't got to talk about this in a while. And rightfully so, man. It, it took a movie like this to remember that we've gotten movies like this before in different sort of uh, formats. So we built a little scorecard, right? And uh, we're going to go through it. And assign bottle caps. If you're familiar with us, we do bottle cap reviews and usually give uh, bottle caps from zero to six, depending on how much we like the movie. A little different this time. We have six categories. And of each of those categories for each movie, you can give zero, one, or two bottle caps, depending on how you feel that category goes for each movie. Right? Makes sense? If it doesn't, stick in. Uh, we're just going to talk a whole bunch of junk about Ninja Turtles and how much we love, loathe, and can't wait for more of these movies, right? Since you're talking about bottle cap reviews, we actually have two recent ones that we did before this for uh, Mystery Men awesome. and The Brave Little Toaster, <laughs> Both are- which, which just came about because we had we were having a conversation and it popped up. We're like, let's, let's review that movie, and then we did. <laughs> Both are gems for their own right. Uh, yes. One does not have a Goody Mob soundtrack, so we made sure to include a goodie mob soundtrack in that but uh check those out i'm sure we'll find a way to review another bottle cap ninja turtle property because technically there is a third animated movie but it went straight to tv these these both went to theaters so turtles forever right does not we count do that. we have to do that we have to do that i think, I think we're just saying we have to do that now so let's get yeah, into i was gonna i was gonna pull that out I was gonna, one day I was gonna, we should do this yeah. where they all meet and then but you've already beat me to the punch this is us with turtles Let's get into it. Let's do uh, voice casting. So that's our first category. And man, they spared no expense with both both voice casts in both categories. I'm going to do Mutant Mayhem first. Just going to give you a full rundown because there's so much talent squeezed into these pages. I guess frames? Not pages. Maybe I'll make the edit. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave it in. Pages, I, I was like, when you said pages, I thought script. So That works. Also, we're a comic book podcast, so... We have uh, Makai Abbey playing Donatello. This is Mutant Mayhem 2023. Uh, Makai Abbey playing Donatello. Shaman Brown Jr. as Michelangelo. Nicholas Cantu as Leonardo Bradley Noon as Raphael. Ayo Idebri as April O'Neil. Maya Rudolph as Cynthia Umtron. Utron. Utron. Umtron. Umtron. She's, that's one of the, the Krang. Yeah, she's a Krang. Right? Krang. That's, that's the whole thing that like the whole Krang's in this. Uh, I mean, they don't reveal that here, but that's, those that know, right? Like she's got the name. Yeah, you know, you know. John Cena as Rocksteady, Seth Rogen as Bebop, Rose Byrne as Leather Leatherhead, Natasha Demetru as Wingnut, Giancarlo Esposito as Baxter Stockman, Jackie Chan as Splinter, Ice Cube as Superfly, Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko, Post Malone as Ray Follett. Hannibal Burrs as Genghis Frog, and uh, cameo Mr. Beast as Times Square guy. Really, Mr. Beast, the streamer. Yep, and uh, I, I'm 
pretty sure Kevin Eastman is also another New York cameo in this movie. Yeah, there was there's a there's some egg, there's some Easter eggs for uh, Laird and Eastman in this. I don't know what they were. One, the one was the high school and oh yeah, and one was something one's else. another yeah. building that says uh, yeah. Laird on it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Um, and let's go to TMNT 2007. Patrick sure. Stewart as Max Winter. Michael, he's got a great, he's got a great voice. <laughs> but so does uh, Michael Iwamasu as Splinter. Chris Evans as Casey Jones, Sarah Michelle Gellar, the lovely, lovely, as April O'Neil, Zhang uh, Ziyang Zhang as Karai, Lawrence Fishburne as the narrator, Nolan North as Raphael, James Arnold Taylor as Leonardo, Mikey Kelly as Michelangelo, Mitchell Winfield as Donatello, John DiMaggio as Colonel Santino, Kevin Michael Richardson as General Agula, um, Paul Matoli as General Serpentine, Fred Tiasco as General Gatto, and Kevin Smith as an unarmed cook at a diner where Night Watcher fights the Jersey Devil. Strong in both. Yes, yeah, they're both very good voice casts. Others shine in different places for different reasons. Um, I think you have to give. Well, personally, I think I'm going to give two bottle caps to Mayhem. Mayhem went out of their way to pad up all the characters around the Ninja Turtles, and basically the Ninja Turtles are unknown. They made everything around them make sure a voice that you can recognize here and, like, do good work. So, I think I'm giving that two caps right there for me. Mayhem? How many are you ordering? How was, okay. So, it's I, I can do one of each or two and zero, right? You're going to Award caps to each movie. You can give zero, one, or two. Oh, to be a both. Okay. There was no, but um, that's not true. Donatello's voice in Mayhem drove me nuts. <laughs> I couldn't stand his specifically out because <laughs> he sounded like he was twelve, where everybody else sounded like they were fifteen, right. sixteen, and it drove me nuts. Well, that's crazy. Michelangelo sounded older than everybody, and he's supposed, yes. to, supposed to be the youngest. Yes, he did. <laughs> Yes, he did. I feel like they should have switched Mikey and Donnie or some or I should, anyways. I've a few of them around. I would have done differently. And his voice alone, not even his like what he was saying, just the sound of his voice <laughs> irritated me so much, like unreasonably. I was like, why do I hate this voice so much? It's just it's just because it doesn't jive with the other one. Sure. I think twelve versus fifteen. Um, but then there's guys like Ice Cube, who's fantastic. Shines. He, he was like really good. I was like, man, this. This works for me. He shines for me. Maya Rudolph shines for me. Yeah. Um, even Rose Byrne, who doesn't say much, but anytime her eyes like come to yeah, right? yeah, just Leatherhead shines for me. And then Hannibal Burris and Paul Rudd, because they don't say much, but when they do, I laugh. So that works for yeah. me. Yeah. I didn't like Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko, to be honest with you. Didn't, didn't I like Paul Rudd? And I like Mondo Gecko. I don't like. I didn't like that combination. So what? What bottle caps are you giving? Uh, voice casting for Mayhem. I need one. Fair enough. One. That brings us to TMNT 07. Again, I love Florence Fishman in this. Narrator really yeah. helped pull everything together. Um, I love the turtles. Everyone that voiced a turtle was strong, but sounded yeah. so far past teenager. Like these are young adults. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, young this, adult. Right. If even that, uh, Ninja Turtles. This is this is Mirage Comics turtles. But basically, all my points go to Kevin Michael Richardson, legendary John DiMaggio, legendary. Yeah. Um, all Nolan North. And Nolan North, legendary. He doesn't right? even sound like no, this thing, no. He doesn't even sound like Nolan North in this. That's that's crazy. Like that, that's Nathan Drake. Like you, you don't even. And and don't stop there. I right? like I dare you to go into his IMDb and see how many voices he's yeah. done for the majority of cartoon young adult cartoons that you've enjoyed. Yeah. Like he's all over, uh, young uh, young justice, and I can't wait till we do that. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, it's not as fun, right? Like this is more of a young yeah. young audience movie. And the voice casting. I really like Sarah Michelle Gellar as April O'Neil. Um, but yeah. but I feel like Evans is lost as Casey Jones. I was just gonna say I was just gonna say that I didn't really like Chris Evans as Casey Jones. It didn't I like both I like the character, I like the actor, but it doesn't it's kind of the same as the Paul Rudd thing. It doesn't just doesn't Does, jive. Doesn't do anything. So I'm giving them no. I'm giving them one bottle cap for voice casting. Did you yes, yeah, see, I agree with you all with all the ones you liked, I absolutely agree with you. Right. Then there's also um uh the villain, what's his name? So it's not Patrick Stewart, Max Winter, y- yeah, Yaddle, Max Winter, yeah, yeah. But like he's not really the villain. But it, no, I know. But you, my my point was that when I was hearing him talk, all I could see was 
Patrick Stewart. Fair enough. Like, yeah, he did. He did, and that's kind of distracting. He doesn't change his voice at all. At all, and I'm just like, man, like all I can see is Professor. That was kind of like it sounded good, but it was distracting. Because I was like, man, all I can see is Patrick Stewart. You should like kind of change. Like I don't know. I know he's not a professional voice actor, but that kind of didn't bother me. But it's hard to explain. It was just it was distracting. But I loved Mako as Splinter. Like I felt he was the most calm yes. and yes. like centered. And even if his weird decisions of sending Leonardo he was great. to South America, he always was the calming force in there. It's like, no, oh, you all have to. And like I just liked his his breath, like his breath work on Splinter was very calm, very relaxed. Yeah. Even when we're like yeah. we have to go oh, oh, like uh, above ground now, right? Like it's time to like action. So like I I rated that, but for me, M- Mutant's more fun. So what are you giving? Mutant's more fun. Absolutely, Mutant is more fun in the voice but, casting, right? But, but we're just talking about what? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's crazy. The voice casting is crazier over there. But I didn't know it. So I, I'm gonna give it one okay. as well. I, I can't. Neither one. I didn't. They weren't perfect. I, to, to be to give it two, it has to be perfect for me. And there was there was a few hangups in each of them. So all right, this is a good note because I'll probably have to mark harder now moving forward. But uh, <laughs> I'm very I'm very particular in my turn. Any, anything that's got ice cubes and your hump super flaw, hump super duper flaw. He was surprised. He, sa- he, he not, saved he a lot of the movie for me. Yeah. Uh, he's like, hey, don't talk to me like that, man. I was like, man. <laughs> I, this is I want respect. What, like his motivation. We'll talk about villains. So he's one which of the we'll, we'll only talking about voice casting, but which which was what was interesting is that you could tell it was Ice Cube, but that for some reason wasn't as distracting as Patrick Stewart as Max. Yeah. Where I don't know why. Maybe it's just because the I don't know, the animation combinated with the I don't know. Well he looks like a Pixar character, right? I kept seeing Incredibles because he's got the yeah. strong chin and then the because it's fun. Yeah. We're going straight into animation style, and like the maybe it just didn't, maybe it just didn't jive well. The voice. I don't know the if look. they knew what know. he was supposed to be because he's not really a villain, but he has he's a, a antagonist to progress the plot. Like he's, he's a man with a plan, but not needed, especially yeah. in a world where you have Karai and the Foot. Like all of that stuff, I was amazing. If this was just Ninja Turtles and TMNT uh, 07. Karai and the Foot are wasted in this. Very much so. They have an amazing scene. But if it was just them rounding up 13 monsters that they just had to kill because ooze, it'd probably be more enjoyable than me figuring out this guy's backstory. Spoiler alert, turns into dust. <laughs> we're going to... So you want to get you want to get into animation. Yeah, right? we're so headed there now. So animation yeah. style, we're talking about uh, how beautiful both of these movies look and for yeah. how they decided to make themselves look especially in completely different times of animation shelf lives again we're talking almost 20 years in between the two uh in terms of mayhem if you haven't seen if you're one of the three people that haven't seen uh spider-man across the spider-verse um the blends of colors and like it's much like this book it's like a coloring book like there's they're we're moving past the steady sort of formulaic this is what animation has to look like we're breaking that mold this one has a comic book style it's scribbled it's jagged no villain's face is uh aesthetically aligned like they're always like a sharp corner or uh like a, a chin that's kind of jarred out and they're kind of ugly like everything is kind of ugly including the yeah. turtles which makes sense splinter's super ugly which i think that's to his detriment but you kind of see the beauty in that when it's paired against how rich they make New York look with the bright, vibrant colors and them coming out of the shadows into like these bright places. It's gorgeous to look at. Like it's it's one of uh, the most beautiful looking things you get to see this year. Uh, I stand on that coming out of Spider Man because I think that's the most beautiful. So the fact that this could keep opening that kind of doorway for animators and animations of people of all styles to be like we can blend it we can all make it look well like nothing has yeah. to fit this one doesn't fit together as it's perfect. interesting because i because i clearly there's clearly um channels for comparison between spider-man across the universe and tmnt mutant mayhem yep. but at the same time they're they're still very different yes. like it's there, there's a, there's a similar like i don't know what you'd call it like the kind of break like the the frame rate i guess sure. is kind of like choppy yeah so that's the commonality but the animations are very different in my opinion mm-hmm. like but the, i understand why they're compared because they're very striking this mean mayhem is gorgeous yeah. it's but i think the animation style is the best thing about the entire movie it's like 
the way it looks is like it's never it's like always something going on it's a lot going on yeah. and it's but it's still somehow they make it possible to follow it all um the turtles look great the villains look great the animation look it's weird and ugly in a beautiful way like you're saying and it's just like i love it i'm like two caps right now i'll like say that right now that's, that's easy like, i was like i loved watching it, this all go it's on. almost like a. Wallace and Gromit, it looks almost claymation like. Yeah, but yes, it's like, yes, that, that's right. It's, it's, it's 2D, like yeah. they, they managed to like give a definition and like a depth on a 2D like side scroller, right? And then they do mm-hmm. amazing things with specific scenes in the animation style. Like we keep talking about to the death of us, the fight sequence where they have to go find those mob bosses, and there's four different yeah. mob bosses, and you see each turtle take the lead and how their fighting style is completely different until they start layering over all the same moves that they would do. Gorgeous. And like Amazing. We'll talk about the cheat codes that they layer on that when we get to soundtracks, but that style is so fun, and yet for a fan of a Ninja Turtle property, you're like, how do you reinvent the wheel with this? And they manage to do it. It looks amazing. Yeah. So yeah. It looks it looks incredible. Ma- it looks Mayhem is an easy two for me as well. Yeah, yeah. That's easy, easy, easy. I don't know how you could even if you, you hated everything else in the movie, you cannot deny that. Like, well, who's hating everything else in the movie? Nothing. I'm just, I'm trying to be dramatic. <laughs> it just, but it lo- it looks fantastic. I was like, man, this looks amazing. Because you're right. I, you're right. You said it right. It's, there's a, there's like a claymation vibe, yeah. to it, which is really cool. Going on the other side, TMNT 07. This was on the heels of kind of Pixar when they were starting off. So we had seen. Toy Story, but we had never seen anything 3D CGI animated to that point yet. So everything still has that gloss and that smoothness. But there's a lot of attention paid to like the detail of like water. So there's certain scenes where Leonardo leaves a plane and he's hang gliding and he flies over the water. The water looks beautiful and he he like kicks up some with his hand and you see the splash work and all the time they they paid on that. The fight between Raphael and Leonardo in the rain. Like all the work really, really is cool. insane, and you see the like how it hits them, how it's hitting everything else, how it splashed. So like the love was there. These were animators like told like you can finally go off and like do amazing things. It's very polished, it's very smooth, but it's of the time. Um, and even the fight sequence, there's a tracking shot that I love towards the end. I I prefer that than the actual final fight when it's the turtles and Splinter in the courtyard, and they're fighting the foot. And it's fought, like there's a tracking cam following each turtle as they go from whoever they're battling to any team ups to like yeah. running around the hedge. I loved it. The only thing that threw me off is if you look at the side uh, or in the background, you'll see the trees and the ruffling. But all the trees are ruffling like constantly. Like they just yeah. added that one tracking shot that like threw me off. That, that's a cool note. I didn't. Yeah. But uh, other than and here's the detriment for me for this animation style. All the turtles with regards to their mask, all look the same. They hadn't really figured out, other than Raphael having a little more uh, husk and bulk, how these guys needed to be different levels, different sizes, different tones, and have like different appendages. Like We'll see in like later cartoons and uh, comic book prints, like they'll carry specific things. Like they'll, they'll put on pieces of flair, if you will, to identify themselves more. Even in certain comics, the way that they cut out their masks is directly different than their brothers. This yeah. one kind of blends together, and you can say that about the humans as well. They kind of all look the same. It's the same sort of model, um, but it's still very beautiful, um, and it's hard for me to knock anything that's animation, right? Like, I, I love looking at this style as smooth as it is. I'm still going to give it a two. Um. Just for reference, this movie was released in 2007. So other animated movies that were released in the same year include Beowulf, oh, whoa. Uh, Superman Doomsday, The Simpsons movie, wow. Surf's Up, uh, Land Before Time 13. Oh, B movie. 13? Yeah, 13. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I said that because I, I was just laughing. When I saw that. I was like, I didn't even know they went past like three. Way to squeeze yeah, that juice 13. box into every yeah. drop. <laughs> just kill, uh, Ratatouille. Um, oh, Enchanted. That's not animated, though. Enchanted. I don't know what's on the list. So, uh, like, to, mo- more like Mosaic. I, do you know what Stanley's Mosaic? I've never heard of that. No. Before. Hey, who knows? We may uh, yeah. BC it now. It's, it's, it's leaning towards the. 
Ratatouille and B movie style of yeah, very polished, very clean, very smooth. Yeah. Not a lot of personality, so we, but if you like the property, then you're gonna kind of enjoy it. Yeah. So so yeah. My my point. Oh, Shrek the Third as well. But so I'm, my point is like, it's hard to compare it now because it's it does look a little bit stiff in certain aspects. Like there is a very you're right. There's a bunch of sameness mm-hmm. between the character model, but they look good. It's very dark overall, and it's fluid. Even though it's, I don't know, it's hard to say because it's a little stiff, but it's also a little fluid. Like yeah. Max Winters, he's 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 so stiff, right? Like, <laughs> like, like he, like guys, guys got a like a spine made out of steel. He's just like, <laughs> or sort up his, fine, or his, it just looks kind of, or gonna sort up his butt like Wonder Woman. Oh, sorry, yeah, stone sword, you know. What oh, I mean? yeah. Um, I liked it. It's not. It's not nearly as striking, though. It's just very different. So when you consider the time that it was created in two thousand seven, it's it's weird. It's a, it's a hard thing to rank because mm-hmm. if I ranked it today, it'd be one bottle cap. Yep. But if I ranked it back then, which is it'd what be it, two, right? Yeah, which is what I did. So it's kind of it's kind of a. It was the first of its time. I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna try and sell you on the animation style to give you two bottle caps. It's of the time. It's coming out of Pixar, which everyone thought Pixar was, but this was aimed for us. And the fact that right. they paid, like. For the brain scene alone, where you get Leonardo versus really, that's the best scene. It. I remember. You know what's funny? Is I watched this movie when it was new, and that was the one scene that stuck with me until you rewatched it. We rewatched it just a few weeks ago. I was like, yeah, you get. I remember. There's scene. close up on his eyes. Like they just do. Yeah. They do a lot of work with that relationship and the what they do with Rain because Rain is hard. Yeah, and uh, they were like, no, we were gonna put everything in Rain. We yes, epic battle. Were these? Yeah, that was that was tense. That was really good. So okay, fine. You sold me too. There you go. I was I was I was kind of looking for help there. I was like, you gotta do one, you gotta do two. You do two because the next category is really where we start becoming true Ninja Turtle nerds. And oh, okay, and that that is characters. We're talking the big four and the big four arcs. We're talking Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo. We now know these guys inside and out based on how we read them, how we watched them through cartoons. But each movie decides to give. A somewhat origin story. TMNT is more coming from the battle and taking off. I guess you would say from Secret of the Ooze number two, where they've defeated Shredder and they need to go do their own thing before they come back together. Mutant Mayhem is more of a retelling and an origin story. But all of these movies have to rely on these four brothers and how they react with each other and how they play into the archetypes that we know we can. Um, so I'm going to give it to you first because I know you have a lot to say on each, um, both Mutant Mayhem and TMNT, and then uh, we'll go in with, did they get it right with uh, the big four? This, this is like my, this is my stickler um, category for anything that's that's adapted. Even MCU movies, you know how I am, right? You can do anything you want with the story. You can do whatever. And sometimes it's a hit or miss, but you got to get the characters right. Yep. Otherwise... In my opinion, otherwise, what's the point of adapting? Fair. No, if you if you're just gonna create new personalities for them, why you just create new characters? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's that's my whole stick. So it's like when it's off, it really really hinders the 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 product for me. When it comes to Frank, who which one do we talk about first? Let's do mutant. Let's do mayhem. When it comes to mutant mayhem. I don't like it. I don't like the characters <laughs> at all. They're, they are. It's not the annoying teen things because I think they're they're actually less annoying than Michael Bay's. Those Ugh. those guys were even worse. Ugh. But I didn't I didn't expect much from those movies, so we just kind of like shunned them when they came yes. out. So I didn't really care. We even we even did a bottle cap for the second one. Yes, which is the better of the two. Out. Yeah, which is about it too, but not because of the turtles. It's because of Rocksteady and Bebop. Yeah, exactly, and they were done great. Who are amazing. Yeah, we were doing great in that movie. An amazing um, synergy. I'm just going to interject there. They used wrestlers twice. So in uh, Michael yeah. Bay's, they get Sheamus to play Rocksteady. And in Mutant Mayhem, they get John Cena to play uh, Rocksteady. Did they get Viscera to do him in? No. Who was it that played? It's a, I don't have his name, but he was a voice actor for uh, Boondocks. Oh, okay. Gary. I'll look it up. Give me a second. They were great. They were great, though. That's the, the, if there's one takeaway from those horrible Michael Bay films... Is that or Michael Bay produced films? Is that the second one, Bebop and Rocksteady, are fantastic? Oh, like <laughs> I'm pretty sure he directed those two. Uh, did I, he? Okay, I could be wrong. I thought somebody else did, and then he just kind of provide because the animation looked very similar to 
to Transformers. But Fair anyways, that, we're not talking about that movie in this. It's just um, just for comparison's sake, before I start talking about how much these turtles annoyed me, those, <laughs> those ones annoyed me for different reasons. The reasons why... Did you find what you're looking for? Or you're looking for something up? Yeah, I'm getting his name right now. Oh, the guy's name. Okay. When we're talking about Mutant Mayhem, the problem with these characters is at the very beginning, you get a bit of flash of personality, and then the rest of the movie, they're just carbon copies of each other. Until the very ending, when Leonardo's like, Donnie, you're supposed to be the smart one. You're supposed to be the... So it's like... Okay, so we don't get to see them actually be themselves. We just are told that this guy's this and this guy's that. And I that pissed me off. I don't know if I fully agree. Um, I think they get dis- levels of personality. They're not as distinct as, let's say, TMNT, which I don't no. know is much better. But you can start seeing who they are in comparison to each other, right? Like, Leonardo is proven to kind of be the narc and the outsider and wants to be by the book and always do what his father's told. Uh I like when they're training and they're they're all using each other's weapons to see which weapon is going to be theirs. I love the scene. It's just a little blank scene, like a fast, quick scene. Like I love that montage where Raphael is using a bow staff with Mikey, breaks Mikey's bow staff in two, and then you just see Mikey go ah! and start spinning them, and you you figure out like nunchucks is going to be his uh, weapon of choice. It's kind of subdued because I really think they're trying to play up the fact that they're teenagers. And as much as the personality as you may have when you're a teenager by yourself, when you're with your clique, it's kind of a hive mind. You kind of become the same person and just shades of that same joke, right? Like that whole we outside that goes on for way longer than it needs to. But like, I think that's the joke in that, right? Like that's teenagers. They're annoying and they're all kind of the same. Um, but I don't know if I'm arguing for what it's like to be a teenager as opposed to arguing for these are four distinct characters. Now, is this a movie that's showing them growing into that or were they always established? Yeah. See, so you, you, you just, I was, you just took my rebuttal and said it yourself. Like my thing is like, yeah, they're, they are great teenagers. The fact that they are teenagers, the fact that they are annoying, like the, we are, like that whole thing that does not bother me. They are teenagers. That's what teenagers do. There's, they're, they're, they're in the moment, right? Mm-hmm. But that brings me to the point. So why adapt this? If you're not gonna, if you, because you can do that and still have Raphael be incredibly moody. He's not moody in this. He's he's a little bit attitude at the beginning, and then that's it. Like he's a moody mother. Like do you ever like teenage angst, man? Yeah. I'm not saying that they need this in here, but Raphael is supposed to be very, very touchy, very, very moody. Very, very bitter, like that, like the whole world's all my. But he's just being silly in this, which is fine. It's fine, but the problem is they're all doing the exact same thing. Right. You don't really get to see that Donatello is actually smart until the very end. Well, I love that you bring up Donatello because that's been one of my biggest pet peeves with that character throughout the years. He used to be the rude one, and like his his genius used to manifest in like I'm great with tech, but I'm terrible with people, and I'm just gonna kind of yeah, that's see, that, lash out. That, that would have been perfect. Like I, I wanted to see Donatello that was kind of like socially inept, but kind of like dry sarcasm. Yes. Like, yeah, well, you're not that smart anyways. Like kind of like which throwing shade the whole time. Right? Which like, kind of so. works for Donatello in the other movie, TMNT 07, yeah. but only in the beginning. Like it's a tale of how much they want to really lean into the arcs because Mayhem does it in the end, but TMNT does it in the beginning. So, like, they establish it, but then they don't really stick to it. Like, they're not really playing arcs once they all link up. It's really, I'm talking about TMNT 07, it's Donatello versus, sorry, it's Raphael versus Leonardo. That's a Leo, that's a Leo Raph movie. Yeah. Let's let's not, let's not get confused. The other two are just there. Well, you don't, you don't get points for that, right? Um, So, again, I guess uh, you have points. Um, Their size and their animation shouldn't lend to the fact that if you can't get who their characters are, inherently on the page and how they say it then it doesn't work and you could essentially switch all of their masks with all the voice characters and you wouldn't know the difference between and you would know that that's and that's my point except for leonardo and that's only yeah because they have they have they ride the narc thing for the whole movie and at the ending he's like oh i'm the leader now so you guys gotta do what i say which is fine because you're right he at least he stands out a little bit throughout the movie i don't want to sound like i'm a hypocrite but 
And this is a, this is an argument. This is a complaint from a hardcore Nerdle tur- Turtle nerd, right? Like I like that though, Nerdle the, Turtle. Maybe we... Nerdle Turtle. You like that, Nerdle Turtle? Well, not Turtle. The, Nerdle the, Turtle. What's the, the, the uh, cool Nerdle Turtle? The the the, the, the typical viewer that doesn't really care that just watches for entertainment is gonna have a blast with this movie because they don't give they don't give a shit about. But I do because I'm a geek. So so it's like so that really annoyed me because I'm like, man, you guys could have if you had done that right, it would have made the experience so much better. And then if we take it from outside the turtles, I don't know if you want to do that now, because we are talking about characters. Sure. The mute animals is a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. Whereas Superfly is a mate. Like that was great. That is your, that is perfect. But that's personality. That's, that's arc. That's understanding. And a new character. That's a new Mo- developed character. motivation. That's a new take on Baxter the fly, even though Baxter is in it. It's his son now, but, it's a new take on Back to the Fly, which is cool. I'm cool with that. You made a new character, yeah. and he's great. He's got a type. He's got a personality. He's got a low rider. He's, he's got a click. Yeah, he's got test two babies. But, is, but like, is this click sucks? Is that a cho- <laughs> is that a choice? Is that like we make our um, antagonist so strong, and then our protagonists have to rise to the occasion in order to like find out? Like, it's not. I'm trying to like argue for the sake of argument because personality yeah. shouldn't come based on the person you're against. You should have personality point blank. And, like, you get Don and Tello's personality with, like, I'm nerdy and geeky, and they're milking me, right? And it's like, okay, so you're the nerd of the group, but if you didn't have glasses and, like, where's – was Austin? Yeah, you wouldn't know that. It's, it's, the gla- it's the glasses so... argument, right? It's like, okay, so he's a nerd, so he's going to be the only one with specs. But it's not so much that – it's not so much, like – because you're right. There are character arcs, but your personality doesn't really have to be developed through that arc. You are the way you are at the beginning, and that personality – may evolve but it's um it's what you go through that what you learn and it kind of changes your state of mind but you're still the same so you don't think the fighting montage shows their personality in how they no. fight and like how they trained and then which weapons they took that's just no, that's, that's, a just, that's just a fighting style that's not that, yeah that's a bit of a stretch it, like it's a cool sequence it's fun like i'm saying this is not it's everything it looks cool it's just i didn't like how they were so similar to each other like Raphael being goofy they're basically f- Four goofy kids, three three and a half Michelangelos, and then, right? That's the way I took it. And then I love the fact that you didn't even like Michelangelo because he wasn't even like Michelangelo. Like he's a different, yeah. That's what I mean. They, they toned he's, down he's Michelangelo. Michelangelo. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which which is fine. That actually like that's fine a little bit. But it's like you tone down Michelangelo, but then you turn the other ones into Michelangelo <laughs> alt. It's like a var- it's like variants of Michelangelo except for Leo, who was only half Michelangelo and half Leo, right? Yeah. So it was kind of it rubbed me weird. And I was yeah. like, this is. You have the turtles. You, you have points, sir. You have points. Um, right, and then we outside. We outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Splinter was. I understand his personality is because of the way that they got their start. Yeah, because they they changed the origin. Cool, completely changed the lore. That's fine. I don't mind that because you're not changing characters yet, right? But then he's such a whiny bitch. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm so alone, and I'm down here, and humans don't like me. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. But I have you. I didn't jive with that. Yeah, uh-huh. I didn't jive with that. I didn't jive with that. April was cool. I liked April. I like Superfly. Well, that's why I'm saying turtle specifically. Like this category is just yeah. talking about the big four. Like we. Okay, we'll sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was. I'm branching off to different things. I was no, gonna but really let, rip into the mute animals. But, the, but this, no. <laughs> this is probably uh, the, the the part of our scorecard we get the most dip because I can't say I'm happy with TMNT much more either. While they have distinct personalities, you don't. They have different issues. Yeah. They. They're not really. They only focus on two of them. Like it, TMNT 07 for me seems like the first of young adult animation. Like before, mm. really DC got into it and found their wheelhouse. Like it's an adult story, and they're really handling a lot of. It's funny you said. It's funny you said that. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Go for it. When I was reading the animated movies, All right. Guess what movie came out in 2007? Which one? Superman Doomsday, which was the first, first of the, okay. the first did the DC roll up. And then it, no mistake that they got Nolan North too, right? Like they got adult voices for these guys. So they're dealing with more family issues and how that dynamic affects the family. So they don't really get to lean in their archetypes as much when they're together. When they're separated, kind of. Like Mikey's a little more fun, but not really. Like he's got a job. Yeah. Like he's taking stuff seriously. And it's you see how it's like, hurting him like there's a moment when he comes home he's like i'm home and like nobody's in the house like all right fine i'll just turn on the tv right like there's a drop in like his personality in terms of he doesn't get to be the carefree one 
Donatello like missed opportunity. He's doing tech support, amazing. He'd probably be killing it and like have like four different jobs and how many different revenue streams of all the stuff he's inventing. But you don't get his personality like when he's talking on the other side of the phone. Like I want him to be like a rude motherfucker from like the TMNT days original movie where he yeah. had all the one one liner insults to throw back at them, right? So um the ones who do have personalities, again, like you already stated, is Raph and Leonardo. And you you get that. Like Raph is a moody bitch. Uh he can't take anything that's going on in his life and finds a way to get his channel it and like be night watcher. And Leonardo, I don't know why for the love of me, I don't know why your father sent you all the way to South <laughs> South America to get to learn. Go to Canada. Go to go to Northampton. You again could have gone to Hampton. It's somewhere close, right? Like the whole thing about Spencer is like these are my boys. Is all I have. Like, I'm not sending you so far away that like if there was something bad happened, I couldn't be. Anyway, we'll get into that nitpick if we talk about themes. We do. Um, I don't think TM and I don't think TMNT 07 is much better, but they are still more distinct. So, uh, no, I, that's, yeah. Anything you want to say about TMNT, and then we can give the scores. You, I, I agree with you fully on that. It's did they get them right? Yes, but at the same time, it's a two-person show. Like yes. Donnie and, and Mikey are so far in the back seat that they're barely even there. I, I, I feel I don't like I don't really remember the screen time, but it, this is a Raph and Leo movie, right? So much so that uh, Mikey and and Donnie probably get them. Do they get more screen time than Casey? Maybe no, a bit, well, right? kind of because Casey gets a lot of screen time with Raph, like that's that partnership. Right. So like yeah. he builds that yeah. brotherhood stuff up, and then kind of saves the day when he goes get the turtle van. But they're 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 not major players in their own movie, which is not a good sign. No, so the personalities are right, but they're not really involved. So I don't know if that's a points against. It must, I guess, it is points against personality. It's, but. At least the two that they get in there, they get right, and they feel different. Yep. And even Mikey and Donnie feel different than they don't all feel the same. They're not all. They're not four rafts. They're just. Yeah, <laughs> it's sure. It's, <laughs> so that that's that's my comparison to the thing. Okay, we we can talk about other characters too. I don't know if you want to do that, but well, I got I got extra parts. So then we go into like everything else around. This is just right. about the main four because we let's the price of admission. Draw. Yeah, we're coming in for these guys. So if you can't get these guys right. And again, it's they're fun within the movie, but them themselves are not as fun or they're not the archetypes that I need them or want them to be. So I don't give any bottle caps for Mutant Mayhem, and I'm only giving one to TMNT 07. Damn, that's what I was going to do. Oh, look at that. I was going to do zero and one. Sm- I, thought, I thought you were going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, like after after voice casting, like I have to be a little hard. He's like, yes, I do have to be a little hard. We do Turtles nonstop. Whether or not we record it for you guys, we're constantly talking about Ninja Turtles. Yeah. There's another game that you're already like, yo, looks good. So, looks dope. Uh, the mute animals. How do you not? Actually, <laughs> not. You can say, "Where's pizza? Where's pizza face?" <laughs> <laughs> I know he's not a mute animal. He can't be a mute animal, but still. Sequel, maybe you don't know. Yeah, I want to see pizza face. There's ooze all over the place. So next, we on pizza face. Oh. <laughs> Don't if you can give me a crossover because they gave us Batman versus Ninja Turtles. So theoretically, Pizza Face and they and, 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 and oh my gosh, we move into themes, which is our fourth category in this. We're talking about plot and we're talking about Eastman and Lair Lord, right? So lore, I should say. We're talking about the influence that came from the originators and the stories of the movie, which aren't as straightforward as you would think, especially for one of these movies. Uh, do you want to give the plots? Yeah, so TMNT, my voice cracked there, didn't it? That was pretty good. TMNT 07. This 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 takes place after um, TMNT two, right? Yeah, I think is it's after C- after Secret Ooze, Yes, because this is after Secret Ooze. They it's de- kind of like defeated a- Shredder. They have his helmet on the mantle, but Karai is and the foot still are. But Karai wasn't in this, so it's kind of like a a bridge. It's almost yeah. It's not really a sequel. It's kind of like an alt version of that reality, I guess. Well, after be, the fact, yeah, I think so. Um, so the turtles are all disbanded, or not, not disbanded, doing their own thing. We goes off in South America. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? 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 I don't know. Weird decision. But they get back together, and there's somebody. There's monsters showing up in New York. 
randomly and well spoilers but there's a it's 20 years rich old. guy <laughs> max winter is collecting these statues who are he who are like generals from the eons ago right and he has to get all these monsters collected and harness their energy to kind of release his army again <laughs> Yeah, this is more. This is more complicated than it needs to be. <laughs> like, I, like it turns into a Marvel movie in the third act, where there's yeah, it's, it's a it's big strange. beam. They got he needs all the monsters in these cages in order to align. Like planets have to align. He's got four yeah. star. Fo- yeah. He's got four stone generals that are just like, nah, we're immortal. We want to stay immortal and take over the world. It's like, no, I don't want to do that though. I want to be fair though. Try. Movie came out a year before Iron Man one, so this is the MCU hasn't even started yet. But they're so big, they're watching big blue beams. <laughs> oh, we big think. blue beams aren't really a thing yet. Just got a point for me. First one to right? put big so blue this, beams. This, oh, this okay. might be one of the originators of big blue beams. Oh, this guy. Look at that. If you think, I just thought of that now because you're right. Because I'm like, I know, there is big blue beam, but it, it came before. Foot clamp. And Marvel really rode that big blue beam. In the sky wave. Yeah, still still going on. Uh, can't wait for yeah. Eternals. Which it which happens to be the shortest uh superhero movie in their filmography thus far. It's only gonna be like really? an hour and thirty eight minutes. Really? Yeah, I heard it's just like boom boom. Like there's no uh, mixing, there's no filters. It's like we're in it now, like bang bang, boom. Oh, boom. Maybe that might that's interesting. Good. I don't really want another two and a half hour. No, no. Adventure. Just no. an hour and a half of Tiana Paris. Oh, lovely, lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely and story. and the resurgence of Brie Larson. I think she's still a lovely. She's not lovely, lovely, lovely like Tiona. Oh, you, you give it to the one lovely. Well, I don't. I, she hates nerds, but you picked a nerd property, and then nerds and that's insults strange... really hurt, really hate her, and that's unfair. Like, so she's not all in the wrong, but like the it's like that stuff. It's like that stuff that's going on with Doja Cat. Like it's days. <laughs> like, like she posts something, it's just like fuck you. Yeah. I was like, why do you guys hate us? Like. Chill, man. That's a different conversation. I'm gonna leave that one. Yeah, I'm is, gonna leave is, that one is. alone. Um, it is. It is. <laughs> Fine, God. <laughs> in terms of lore for uh, Team NT07, they have Karai, they have the Foot Soldiers, um, and then they they deal with kind of the remnants of Shell Shredder. So like it's, I think it's closely related to what those guys have put out initially, and that's uh, for me. That's a that's at least a bottle cap, right? Um, do you want to do uh, your score for TMNT 07? Plot theme? I, I don't. The, it's not, I, it's not I, great, I'll give I'll give it sure. I'll give it a one. I'll copy. I'll give it a one for mutant mayhem. <laughs> it's a better story. This is one of my least favorite turtle tropes. Is we want to be human too? I hate I hate it so much because they were never ever human. They were just turtles that like Splinter. Was uh, actually no, sorry. In this one, he wasn't. Yeah, which is weird. Sorry, I'm. I'm. I'm I don't know if they want to be human. They just want to do human things. They want respect. Yeah. Like they want yeah. to be treated. Like they want to go to school. Yeah. Which is which is new. They want to accept it. They yes. want acceptance. Yeah. Which is new. and the way it ends is a whole new thing that's interesting and kind of weird and kind of lame all at the same time. It's interesting. We'll see how that goes because I'm assuming they'll make more. Um. But and in terms of the villains, that's where they align. The the ooze mutants also want respect. They want yeah. they want the world to see them as they is. Yeah. They just take their villainy a little step further. And like if they're not going to accept us, then they're going to be the minority and the lesser class. Yeah, they they want to. They become the lizard from Spider Man. I'm going to make a city of lizards, and so it's like this is all stuff we've seen before. At least in Team NT07, we haven't seen that shit before. Blue Beam. Look at that! Oh, but oh, before the blue beams were a thing, though. I know, but now we're we're after the blue beams. We're in twenty twenty three now. Right. Yeah, so you say, you're saying it's a trendsetter we're, versus where we're bookending now. Yeah. The blue beams. Yeah. yeah, but where mutant mayhem is kind of like we've seen this before, right? We've seen this, and and I understand you can't always have an original story, but I just I really me personally I've never liked the whole. We want to be humans too. Like it's, I don't know. What do you think of the TCRI? Connect. What do you think of the? We want the ooze. Oh yes, because and milking, you're right. milking the mutants. It, they, so their their whole plan here is they want to the turtles want to take down this bad guy called Superfly. Yes, that everybody knows the name of, but nobody knows who is who he is. Right. And he's like this big 
criminal mastermind of the underground and they think that if they take him down they can get enough respect from the humans to be accepted that's stupid <laughs> That's that's like it's just like we took down the bad guy. Love us. It's like no, that's oh the motivation stupid. I actually like the plot of yeah. like we don't know who Superfly is and what he's assembling. No, that's cool. I like yes. that. And he's Sorry. he's yes. building a huge machine in like this tanker ship, off uh, like this dock that nobody looks at. That's always glowing green. But I, yeah, I like. No, I, I like don't mind. No, I'm not talking about this. the Superfly aspect. Is interesting. Okay, that criminal thing that everybody knows the name of, but nobody knows him. That's interesting. But the whole like the motive you're right, sorry, the motivation versus <laughs> plot is like it's just dumb. Like you guys are stupid. This is <laughs> We're gonna be accepted. I, I'm gonna be it's like it's like Casey it's like uh Stephen Amell in the Casey Jones things. <laughs> I wanna be a detective. <laughs> like, dude, you're thirty seven, just apply. Like <laughs> All right, since you tied back in uh what was it? It's not Secret of the News, uh out of the, the sh- out, of, out of the shadows, Gary Anthony Williams is the voice actor, the legendary voice actor of the place. There we go, Bebop. Um, yeah, it's 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 an easy comparison to connect Out of the Shadows to Mutant Mayhem, and that's not a good thing when it comes to the theme and the plot. It's not strong, but everything around it, like motivations, are like that's a it's a how do you how do you make a story that's weak but have everything else connected to it stronger yeah exactly it's like the villain the villain origins is cool but like it's like let's find a way to get the turtles involved okay they think that they're going to get accepted for beating this guy it's like that's what that's the angle you want to go well, yeah that's fine let's roll with it cuz we'll do some flashbang thing and that's the pro- that's the thing with this movie is that i love a lot of aspects of it and then i hate other things well it's actually like, actually coke uh pussy's gonna get them killed because they don't get involved with superfly oh, till the romance fuck god damn till they till they meet april and april's trying to be a budding journalist and tells them kind of of this crime ring that's happening and i like that connection at least before it gets romantic of she's feeding them information and then and they're taking the intel and then acting on it right, right? like that's where you get some crazy action sequences in it is the pl- so I wrote down. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, just, just if it, you no, no, no. jump jump off the I, April thing. This is one change that I like. I get behind this one because I'm used to April being like a big sister to them, mm-hmm. where it's like she kind of. That's what always worked for me. Is like she's kind of helping them guide. She's trying to help guide them through the real world. Like listen, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. Right. This one, she's more of a a friend or a companion right. rather than than a mentor, a, and that works peer, for me. Yeah. Yeah, up here. Thank you. That works for me until they get the romantic thing. And I, that's that fucking 2012 series <laughs> started that with Donatello and April. And I hate it because they've always had a thing. Like even you go back to the original movies. It's weird. Like Lange's like, you just, you know, he likes. So they, is it, they is flirt it, with her. Sorry. Is it never any. So I was going to say the comic has Michelangelo flirting with April. But are you saying in the cartoon it's Donatello and April? So in the in so no I'm talking I'm talking about live action stuff like even the live action remember Secret of the Use stuff right. he, Don, Mike he's got the picture of the the poster okay, of the okay. swimsuit model and then he's like they're always hey, April I just wanted to say hello <laughs> right <laughs> like yeah, that's no. funny stuff right because she doesn't reciprocate right now it's like there's like reciprocal feelings or something and it's like this is it's it, it goes from being flirty and and like silly to like romantic and it's like this is not but it doesn't because uh leonardo gets shut down by his brothers obviously and that's all fun when they're working on the phone yeah no. but when he asks her to the dance and she's like as friends and he's like Ugh. like it's so it's not romantic it's 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 because kind of the character of neil Lardo is like they leonardo's a simp in mutant mayhem that's there's no sugar way there's no way to sugarcoat <laughs> I, I, it and i'm trying to avoid that because typically leonardo is usually my favorite he's my go-to dude yeah. But, like, the way that he's just a nerd for his brothers, they're like, we don't want to hang with you, and, like, lovesick over this girl because just because he hasn't seen any other girl. I think, like, that's yeah. how they're trying to play it up. Sucker for love. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, it's not even love yet, right? Like, you remember when you are a teenager, like, you didn't even know what love was yet. You're just like... Oh, yeah. You know, a, girl, a girl bats her eyes at you. You're like, oh, my God. She didn't even do that. I get it. They threw, a, yeah. they threw a ninja star in her head. Like, that girl be dead if she didn't have no helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this- <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> like dead in the Very streets, and like oh, that's a different movie. But th- it's a stronger plot, right? Like I, d- I can't say it's a stronger connection to like source material. Well, like that may be loose a bottle cap because I like any time. Well, no, I take that back because they used all the mutants. Like you, we get uh, what's his face in this? Not Mondo Gecko. Uh, oh, we get everybody in this. Like Genghis Mondo Frog, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Wingnut, uh, like Baxter Stockman, even though it's brief. 
So the fact that like you get all of those things, but those are more extras as opposed to the plot. The plot of Mutant Mayhem is better, but not great. Um, how many cap? How many caps you give it? I'm, I'm struggling to find a way to keep going back to this well. But see, when we well, but see when when we go into like the motivation stuff, I got it. Like I can't get behind that at all. Yeah. It's stupid. I hate. I just from from a person like I cannot stand this and it's usually like in when you go to the comics and stuff it's usually like just one of them like oh i wish i could be in that part of that world like an ariel right and they're yeah. like nah man like get a hold of each other but in this one it's like it's the same thing they all want the exact same thing yeah. Not, like there's no leo saying like guys we can't ever do this it's just, they're all like no we all so it's it's usually one that wants it and the rest are kind of like bro snap out of it and this one they all want it and then it motivates it's the reason behind their whole motivate like for fighting crap. I don't know. I just I gotta give it none because I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. But then if you talk about the superfly angle, that's cool. But that's not the that's not the plot. That's not the plot. So I get I gave it one, and that was a hard one. I really want to give it a half, but I don't think that's yeah. fair because why I do uh, halves when we don't need halves. Um, yeah. Th- there is some um, like the TCRI that is a connection to. Uh, Laird and Eastman source material, and the fact that yep. we do get the teaser scene of what will be Shredder if they do do another one. Do you want that though? I want another. I, don't even want, I want another one because I I want you to, f- to f- no. But do you want that? Because I don't really want Shredder in these movies. I kind of if they're gonna keep doing this, don't even do Shredder. Just do weird shit. That, like why bring in somebody new and you have the whole new animal? That's fair. The only reason I would want Shredder is that's the motivation to pull Rocksteady and Bebop from, from where the away, turtles yeah. are. You can do that with Krang too, though. Yeah, they're dumb. I don't know why you would you want to really live with need them. Shredder. Yeah. yeah, it's you know, I, I'm not. You don't really need. Shredder. I don't think Shredder works for this. That that universe, because everything's so silly. The, 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 that's why that like mutant mayhem is a weird sort of yeah mind fuck because they're trying to get all of these. This is a forty year old property, so never really, you, you can't make everybody <laughs> like happy. The hard stop. <laughs> like the hard stop. Because it's true, but you you can't make everybody happy. You can't please everyone, and that that movie definitely tries to. And yeah. there's certain things that I was like, oh, I love it. I had to watch a movie in a certain mind frame. I was like, I love it because the animation style is beautiful. I love it for, when we get to it, soundtrack. The channels are such a cheat code for a specific <laughs> yeah. genre of people. Um, we talked about that, yeah. That's... I love it for the weirdness that's everything outside the turtles. I don't like it for the turtles. And like, yeah. how do you make a turtle movie and I don't like it for the turtles? That's, that, and that's, that's kind of, we're, so we're on the exact same wavelength. And it's like, I'm watching this. I'm like, if I was like 10 years old, it's probably my favorite movie. Yeah. You know, because I wouldn't know any better. And that looks, it looks amazing and it's fun and it's silly and it's crazy. And, and it's made, it's to... made for you. It's made to look yeah, goofy exactly. and fun. And you want to watch these guys yeah. grow. Why wouldn't there be a sequel for this? Yeah. Yeah. But as, as me who I am, I like, I love the theater like, oh, that's not for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, was I mad? Ah, like, you, not really. You, I just kind of. You were. I remember the thread that you gave me when oh, you first saw the movie. I was mad. You were I very mad. mad. You were very upset with mad. the direction of a few things. I'll pull up receipts, but that's a deep, deep dive on. Oh yeah, a, I got it. Yeah, yeah, I let you have it one day. That's right. Um, you're like, what? It's and I was like, it's, it's, it's funny. You're like, no, it's not even funny. I was like, all right, fine. It's well, you know why? Because there's another thing too. We're not even. This is kind of off topic. What we're talking about, but the pop culture references pissed me. <sighs> hell yeah off. so many i'm like what are we doing here like and crap. again that's a sign for a specific demographic right like yeah the songs the turtles are singing is not what the audience is hearing in the soundtrack like it's no diggity black street being played when they when they take down like these five sub bosses i'm like i love this this is perfect this is yeah. right from my wheelhouse and then they go i can't remember what song that's how cool i am because when they're all getting milked and Don tells like do you want me to sing that song yeah, yeah sing that song and they're singing whatever Weird. popular song Weird. of this time, but I have no idea what it is. And they're not doing it properly. And like that's the joke. That joke's not for me, right? Like that's completely not even over my head, under my head, right? Like it's, yeah. it's for a generation below me. So it's missed. Um, all right, let's get off themes because th- it's not looking good for turtles in uh, <laughs> may have pers- per- well, personality. Uh, sorry, in personality and in themes, they're not doing well in the score. But we move to extra part, which is this is for me all the intangibles, like all the fun stuff that's layered in there, right? We're talking about Splinter, and that, com- that includes the design and the look of him. Villains, so we're going with Superfly, with I don't know, Winters, maybe 
Karai, maybe foot, fine. We're talking the Ewes Mutants versus the 13 Monsters. We're talking April Ebony versus April Ivory. April Ivory. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Dean. <laughs> We're talking the sewer home because that's a really good, like, that's set direction and design, right? Like, the way yeah. that they designed their house is really cool. And we're talking, like, the turtle vans because they both have turtle vans in it, right? So these are all the stuff that uh, you, you you couldn't put anywhere else, but it's going to make the movie that much lived in, right? It makes it feel like they're in New York. They, they live in here. Like, this is this is their day-to-day life. What do you want to start with? Ah oh, man, there's so much to t- there's so much to pull out here because I already mentioned the pop culture references. They were annoying as shit, yes. and one doesn't have any, and one has like an obscene amount of them. So that's that's one. Like we're talking about extra characters, like extra parts, wasted characters. Yeah. In you can argue in Team NZ07, two of the turtles are wasted. Casey Jones is wasted. Karai and the Foot Clan are wasted. Um, but they're there. You could you could argue, but they're there, and they have they have parts. If you Go to mutant mayhem, but seventy percent of the mutant animals are wasted completely. They have like two lines. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you, Do you remember seeing all of the thirteen monsters that are supposed to be in Team? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> exactly. Why would you make it thirteen? Why don't you make it four? It made, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like when I said those thirteen yeah. monsters and they wrap them up in ten minutes. It's like, well, why don't you just make it three and you have them? very distinct designs for them it's weird understand. the protagonist like uh or sorry antagonist list for tmnt 07 would be winters who's not really a villain yeah his four stone guards 13 they monsters no personality <laughs> yeah they're all the same they're all just yeah. it's just voiced really nice uh 13 monsters that you they kind of appear kind of see appear. like four like one's a bat i think and one's like a little red devil one's the monkey the, the, yeah. the, the gorilla or something the that they fight on the uh, on the in the 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 construction site. Yep. Okay. That's the yeah, only one that yeah. I remember, right? And the one that they forget the end, which is like a big woolly mammoth that just slides in and like that's right, saves yeah. the day. Um, yeah. Then Karai and a fleet of foot soldiers. So like you spend all this time with all these villains that I'd love to see turtles interact with and fight, but not really because you kind of have Night Watcher as well as uh, an antagonist. So it's, it was a weird choice um, compared to the Ooze Mutants who all look distinctly amazing. Like getting... Anytime you got, actually got a straight shot to look at like pronounced jaws or like overbites or like how Genghis Khan is so small and like his tongue's so big. Like I love the character design of them, but again, they don't get to shine other than like brief moments when they're singing in a car or I like your style. I like your style, dude. You're cool. You're cool. Let's hug. Let's hug. Which is Paul, Paul Rudd's uh, well, actually, Mondo Gecko. Since we're talking about the mute, the mute animals, let's do it. There's a, uh, we can get into this a little bit. Cause I, I remember I did some, I molded, some, I mixed some knowledge that I already had with some research I did. Genghis Frog is one of four turtle, four frogs, right? Genghis Frog, Attila the Frog, Napoleon Bonafrog, and Rasputin the Mad Frog, right? Remember them from the eighties oh. cartoon? I've, and I thought that was, I was hoping there was going to lead into uh, what's it, uh, Battle Toads? But yeah, yeah, that'd be funny. No, they were they were four. They're punk. They're called the Punk Frogs, and they were trained by Shredder okay. in an attempt to like fight. The turtles. So he's like, I'll get four frogs oh. and we'll take them out. And he named them after like war, of uh, war yeah, warlords, war, right? War criminals. <laughs> what happened what ended up happening though is they became friends because they were like, yo, they were like surfer dudes, right? So they were like, all right. Uh there's Wingnut, who usually has a psychic named Screw Loose, who's a mosquito. Nice. And that's an alien man bat who started out also an ally of Shredder. Ooh, man bat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then there's Ray, who is a mutated marine biologist and is actually a, usually a turtle ally. So Ray Filet, like, that was that got so old so fast. I could. I'm like, why is he here? Because you need, you needed to get a what's his name? Post Malone. You need Post Malone on something. Ray Filet. I was like, okay, you used that joke already. Ray Filet. Like, For fuck's sake, I could. With say. his with his one goggle and his one eye. Come on. He might be my my least favorite in the group. I think so. Um, Mondo Gecko, who's a turtle ally, as well as uh, is almost always depicted as as tight with Mikey and Casey. Mm-hmm. So the the fact that him and Mikey hit it off that's nice, lore centric. There that's you go. Usually how he gets along. I mean the comic books they do the pizza thing together, yeah. deliver the pizza. Yeah, together, yeah. So. Um, there's Leatherhead, who was my favorite, like one of my favorites as a kid, but he was a villain. Yeah, great. But in those, he was a baby gator that was mutated by Utrams. 
uh, in the original series, and he was uh, he was my favorite because he was sometimes an ally, but sometimes an antagonist. So it kept you guessing, right? Like he did that whole like uh, what's a good example of that? It was the guy from Transformers, the Raptor. You never know if he's good or bad. Uh, Dinobot. Dinobot, yeah. Yeah, you never know if he's good or bad. He's kind of beast there. Machines. Yeah. So I was, I always like ambiguous characters like that, where it's you never know. They're kind of dolo. You mean um, you mean Max Winters? Max Winters. Then there's Scumbug, who was in one episode of the '80s cartoon, <laughs> but had no backstory. And his toy said he was <laughs> this is good. His toy, so his toy description said he was an exterminator hired for the Technodrome who got oozed while he was cleaning. Nice. The why would you Why would you take that job? I mean, it was probably lucrative. <laughs> This is the description. You remember the toys? All yeah, had backstories. Yeah. So the toy had a backstory, but the character in the show never did. He was in one episode. But what are we doing here? You make, with you, that many, and then there's Bebop and Rocksteady who were in there too. You make up an amazing point, and I think you ask yourself, "What are we doing here? We're selling toys." Because yeah. even if the movie fails, yeah, yeah. there's a whole new line of Ninja Turtle toys now. Which which then goes on to even to bolden bolster your point earlier that this is not for us. Nope. <laughs> This is for the new age, which is cool. That's fine. Well, are we um, saying that Ninja Turtles is no longer for us? No, I'm saying this version is no longer for this version. I'm reading those comics, motherfucker. Ooze. <laughs> Ooze. Ooze. Um, yeah, it, some of these jokes, some of these jokes did not work for me. Some of them did, but some of them did Ooze. not. Ooze. Uh, I I purposely liked uh, TMNT's Brown Rat over uh, Mutant Mayhem's White Rat. But like yep. there was a choice to make Jackie Chan's Splinter really ugly, and they did it. He's hideous, yeah. But I again, I this is stuff that we could have said in animation style. I like the fact that they included actual kung fu videos that they actually used kung uh, like cutouts of Chris Pine, Chris Pratt. And what's the third Chris that they use? Uh, Evans. Chris Evans, right when he's doing the whole party and stuff. Like that, that was funny, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. The sewer house is better in TMNT 07 than I do in Mutant Mayhem. Uh, I like the turtle van from 07 than I do Mutant Mayhem, but like they're just getting started. So it's, it's, you can see why Mutant Mayhem is kind of a retelling a new origin because they're starting from scratch. Uh, I'd probably choose April Ebony over April Ivory because she's closer to the journalist that I remember from the cartoon. See, I was interested in that one because I know you really like Sarah Michelle Gellar as she was great, as the voice but she's kind of a ninja. Like she comes back with the Kill Bill, that's right, the yeah. Jackie Chan suit, right? It's like yeah, she, and she zips up, and and she doesn't really get a plot in that movie. Like she's a side side oh. character. It's weird. Um, yeah, her and Casey are that that movie is is honestly just Leo and Raph. Yeah, I, I'm starting to think how any of how, how any of these movies work now that we're doing a deep dive on them. Yeah. Although yeah. I will rewatch them. I'm watching them as we speak. They're in the background because I like I like looking at them, right? Like it's Yeah. It, yeah. It's hard to go wrong with the premise of ooze, four ooze turtles, but here we are. So for extra parts, what do you give Mutant Mayhem out of two, one or zero bottle caps? All the things you can include, all the things you don't want to include, all the things you like, all the things you don't want to like. Ah oh, man, it's so hard. See, this is the where it gets hard because I, the soundtrack, while it's dope, it's overdone. Soundtrack's its, its own dope. Soundtrack's its own category. Oh, okay, thank God. We're thank not. God. That's not an extra part. Soundtrack is its that, own thing. That's a cheat code. Yes, it is. It's, 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 it's like every song. Yeah. Like how I, they, how does it cram as many hits in here? This bro, I, I got the list. We're going through the list of like I would just get the soundtrack regardless if it was Ninja Turtles or not. Like they put so, yeah like, everything. What the hell? Cheat code. It's exactly. It's a perfect way to say that. Whereas extra, extra parts, it's like everything that's intangible. Yeah, so about but it that's not the villain. turtles. So Super, Superfly is a better villain, but then his yeah. his his group is worse than. But they're fun. The foot, some of them are. T- he had TMNT oh seven. I don't know who the main villain is, but everything around it is <laughs> is great. I don't mind thirteen monsters. I don't know who they are. I'm happy yeah, to see the foot. I don't know what they look like. I can't say. Karai was great, but like she's not really in it. She's just like. Well, Cute, like, and she has but that then, speech at the end to be like, "Watch out for I, like a taste of things to come." And then she does a smoke bomb to get out there. But then Splinter, he's way better in 07. Yes, he's a horrible mutant man. <laughs> like, horrible. So where you put? But the then, game. but then April is like, 
She's good in both, but she is more interesting in Mutant Mayhem. She's more interesting yeah. in Mutant Mayhem. She is. She's more of a well, important character to the to the story, to to everything. This, really. this your make or break. Where are you gonna put where are you gonna put your caps? It's gonna tell you which which movie you end up liking with your scorecard. I'm gonna be so lame and say one each. <laughs> That's, That's not lame. They're gonna come out more even than I thought it was gonna be, because if we did it. Uh, initially, just talking about what we hated, we'd be like, "I don't like this movie," and you, we do. We like both. No, movies. this is fun. This is this is a good way to do things because it's it's forcing us to look at it a little deeper. Yeah, it's like they're they're not good. Okay, so you're going one and one for both of them. You're tying it up. Yeah, I'm gonna be annoying and do that. Okay, so I can't because I've already done that. I did that with themes, and I I have to break my tie because I already know where it's gonna get broken. It's on the soundtrack. Um, so I like brown over white. Twice, which is Splinter in April. Uh, <laughs> that's how, just how it shakes out. I like the side villains over the main villains with TMNT 07. And I like their house, so that's even. So it's which turtle van do I like if I'm going but based you, on this you one? Know, you know what, though? Like, I might have to change that because I don't hate anything in TMNT 07. You hate stuff in. I hate stuff yeah. in. Man. But, like, things that are monotonous and boring, that's a hate. Because you're just yeah, like, like if you monsters, thirteen monsters. Why yes, are we doing thirteen yes. monsters? Because if you if you hate okay. something All that's right. going on in Mutant Mayhem, it's 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 making you think. You're like, oh, why'd you put this in here? You have everything else going for you, but this this is throwing me off. For you to just be like, eh, meh, and move on, like that movie's not doing a good job. No, it's true. You'll remember the hated one. So you changing your bottle cups? You doing one and one? Nah, I'll leave it. One okay, one. I'm doing one for uh, Mutant Mayhem. I'm doing two for sorry. I'm doing yeah one for Mutant Mayhem and two for TMNT. Uh, oh, I'm looking at the scorecard and it's. <laughs> I'm live and even I didn't even know you were keeping track. Yeah, I'm, I was doing it. I was doing a live. I do live and correct because I don't want to. It would have been like 15 minutes of me trying to count <laughs> at the end of this podcast. Yeah, no, I don't. Remember. I was like, I don't know how you did, keep. Did I didn't you do two? Keep track of did it. you do yeah. what? Uh, okay, so we go down to our last and usually our favorite because if you've been listening to us since the beginning, we love soundtracks, especially movies of our formal years, and those are usually in the 90s. If you get us with a soundtrack, we're hooked. And if you know how to work a soundtrack for your movie, you're hooking your audience. Uh, This is two soundtracks that are completely different but so distinct of the times they were released. Um, I have the list of all the songs which soundtrack would you like me to do the listing for for first? Do Duo Seven first. Okay, it's probably gonna be shorter. <laughs> it is. These are the uh, songs that were in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, two thousand and seven. Red Flag, Billy Talent. Rip It Up, Jet. Bring Me Along, Pepper. Youth Like Tigers, Ever We Fall. Roses, Megan Dia. Walking on Water, The Providence. This Providence. Fall Back Into My Life, Amber Pacific, Black Betty, Big City Rock, There's a Class for This, Cute is What We Aim For, Lights Out, P.O.D., Shell Shock, Gym Class P-O-D. Heroes, and Odd Dip, Koba Starship. So, if we're going Alternative back... Alternative stuff. Yes, exactly. You hit nail on the head. If we're going back to 07, all, all, alt, alternative, right? Um, and a little, like, old school rock with uh, Black Betty. If we go big, to big tune, by the way, there, uh, there's some strong like Billy Tan. I'm gonna give them a shout outs too, right? Can, yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing. Canada, Canada Zone, and then Gym Class Heroes, which I haven't heard in a long time. But POD, goddamn that POD, that's funny. That's the rock rap. Ooh, yes, era. Uh, going to the ultimate cheat code where you know Ice Cube and Seth Rogen definitely sat down way beforehand and be like, "Can you include these in here?" Yes, we can. We're going with Annie Up, MOP. I know. De La Soul, Oldest Reading. Riot, uh, Hugh Masa- uh, Mas- M- <laughs> Hugh Masekala. <laughs> Cavern, Liquid Liquid. Dance, ESG. No Diggity, Black Street, Dr. Dre, and Queen Pen. Wake Up in the Sky, Gucci Mang, Bruno Mars, Kodak Black. Shimmy Shimmy Ya, Old Dirty Bastard. Can I Kick It? A Tribe Called Quest. Feel Me Flow, Naughty by Nature. Still Not a Player. Big Pun featuring Joe. Sweet Premium Wine, KMD, MF Doom, Party Up, DMX, Ooh Ha, Got You All In Check, Buster Rhymes, Everything Is Everything, Miss Lauren Hill, Work, Gangstar, Brooklyn Zoo, Old Dirty Bastard, Two Cups of Blood, Grave Diggers, and if you didn't think this was Ninja Turtles enough, Ninja Rap, Vanilla Ice. Come yeah, they brought on. brought that back. I did, I did hear that. Yeah. Come on. Cheat code. 
Do I even ask you? Here's no, that one's better. But here, here's my problem though: is that we just spent, and this has nothing to do with the soundtrack. It has something to do with just the overall um, film and stuff. Right. We were just talking about how this is supposed to be a kids movie. Yeah, no, not here. <laughs> they got Annie up in that shit. You can't listen to that. You can't listen to Shibi Shibi Ya. No, <laughs> you can't listen to that. It's still not a player. So it just it just makes it even more confusing. It's like, who is this for? He knows where it's for us, but not really. But not really. It's for like us, but like super ultra man children version of us. <laughs> like we already are that, but it's like we have to be like, I don't know, man. Sorry, that's not talking about the soundtrack. The soundtrack's amazing. It's almost too like I said. I said I think I said at the top. It's almost like too much because every scene was something. I was like, but yeah. they're doing this too. They're doing this too. You know, we didn't uh, incorporate with the first one is any of the scores. Because there's scores in the first, in the first one being 07. Fair. There are scores. This one could have used more scores. Yep. But the soundtrack, if you just buy the soundtrack on itself, that's a crazy mix. Yeah. <laughs> I'd listen to this. Hot. That makes it hot. Yeah. I bet it's on Spotify. You just find the the you may have a soundtrack and just go to town. So the soundtrack is better. But it's cheap. I think it's but, but I think it's cheap. Yeah. And it's worse for the movie. Oh. For this specific movie. What I did not add to it is this way Coke is a smart man. Does this soundtrack belong to this movie? Is a no. great question. No. Parts of it do. Parts of it do. But I mean, like, no diggity when they're fighting. I was like, what is this? <laughs> this doesn't go. Like, it kind of works, but it really shouldn't. Just for be that. when they kick open the door for the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, exactly. That sounds great. And then they just kept going. I was like, oh, well, like, didn't. I feel like certain movies need a DJ to come in and be like, add the mix in here. So, like, pull out the lyrics on that and yeah. put put another score on top of that. Like, if you made or a remix, score, to the, remix yeah. the beat, sample the beat, because mm-hmm, that's a cool part where it kicks in the door and then it goes too far and they're fighting people with no digging. I'm like, this is not working for me. But if you mix that into some sort of like instrumental, yeah. like, a, like you sample the beat, that, that would be dope. But what, as soon as I heard Andy up, I was like, I love this movie. I have, yeah, they, they hit it early too. Yeah, because it's New what York. What you to say? <laughs> and this ultimately, the, the soundtrack and the animation style makes it feel like a New York film. It's grungy too. Eh? It's grungy. Like the first one, the Grunge, grungy is a specific word too. Yeah, because the 07 one is like dark and like dreary, but this one's grungy. It's they both have very distinct styles. It's weird because I would use grungy as a term of alternative in terms of you're talking about music yeah. but i see what you, i see what you're saying with like the gritness of this yeah. song and this style um the cheat code but for me it gets two because i love the soundtrack it should lose a bottle cap because it does not belong with this that's i was just you man you keep your soundtrack we're, like, we're, we're on the same wavelength because i was like i was actually gonna say that i give it two but it doesn't go well with the movie so i can kind of give it one Whereas the other one... Does it go with the movie, though? Does TMNT 07 and all that art rock stuff, does it actually you, go with it? What you said, it does not. But then there's also scores that work really well for it, like the fight scene in the rain. Oh. That's scored. That's not... A, that's not uh, any up. You know what I mean? So it makes, you, it, makes, it, makes it... It has... It gives it more so then gravity. What, what are you giving TMNT? What? One. <laughs> <laughs> you sum them up for the, for, the, for the exact opposite reason you because some of those songs bitch. don't really work but the scores really work for that atmosphere right so I'm, it gets a lift up right but then the other one gets a lift gets a drop <laughs> down even so it, it should be two and zero but it ends up being one on one because they don't know what movie they're making <laughs> either 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 team they do it's just I don't know if it's, it's too many cooks like would we enjoy it more if it was more like monochromatic and when i say monochromatic like they had the theme and they stuck with it and everything aligned to that one vision yeah but like is that ninja turtles ninja turtles isn't that like if you look at the original live action movie like that soundtrack is completely 80s going in the 90s like they got crazy stuff going on it but it works because it's like anything you didn't see and because we're nostalgic we watch that at the age where a lot of these kids are starting this one where a lot of kids started 07 so i think with mutant mayhem if they had shown a bit of restraint with throwing every song in there yeah. and where to put it, I think it would have been a benefit. And then on the other side for 07, if they had kind of spread out what they were trying to do, I think it would have sound better too. Cause they have the scores and that sounds great. But then the, 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 the songs they do have, they have the one black Betty thing. Isn't that where he suits up as night watcher? Yeah. And that works. That's dope. But then everything else doesn't like, I, I remember, I don't really remember. That's the thing. I don't even remember one of the songs they use in the movie. Do you? Uh, I remember, I remember hearing the Billy Talent. 
Um, I, said, I don't remember that. That's that's that's, that's a, I should remember that. Should be memorable. Right? And I remember the gym class heroes because I think that's the um, trailer. Yeah, it's the credits. Oh, let me just follow the oh, internet because it tells you where it is. Uh, Mikey is at the birthday party, so they use it for the intro. Oh, red flag. He was, yeah, he was doing the. He suits up. Uh, rip it up, Jet Actually, is. Maybe, maybe that's gonna get it too because just because of the way they utilize. Yeah. It. Uh, I think it's 07 to 2. Oh, changing everything last minute. Look at this guy coming in. Because the way they utilize it, it's not. But, but, this, but, but, man, but Mute Mayhem's, the collection of songs is, is so much better. Yeah. But they don't use it the right they, way. But they do. Like, you never, listen, you can never use Party Up in the wrong scenario. Not Party Up, but they did do No Diggity. Not right. That's the. I don't remember, and there's, I, there's, I, no, there's some other ones. That, there's some other ones. That, no, 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 Nick, no, no, it doesn't bother me because I like the kind of juxtaposition of like smooth R and B, and these guys are so smooth that the one thing that they do, it yeah, would no, be R and B. Man, it's been a couple weeks since I've seen it, but I remember the No Diggity was around the time. I was like another licensed song. Like I was like really like I, so it was kind of like it was becoming very noticeable, right? Which is kind of distracting. I might I may sound like I'm being hard on it, but you know what I mean. Like it's. Dude, you don't need a you don't need a we, fucking featured song every scene. About being hard on it, we're spending an hour and thirty. We made a <laughs> scorecard for two animated I always, films. I like, always do this. I'm always like, we just talked an hour and a half about this, but I don't want to sound too dirty. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> listen, I like that you you co branded uh, Nerdle Turtle because now that's a hashtag. We we're, we're yeah. definitely two Nerdle Turtles. Um, no. I'm so you're going with one for Mutant Mayhem and then two for TMNT07. Uh, but are we? Mm, but are we talking about the soundtrack as a that's the, as a that's collection? What I, that's what I did. Right. Talking about it as they utilize it. Listen, this is what puts it over the top for me. The composer for TMNT 07 is Klaus uh, Badelt. The computer for sorry, the composer for Mutant Mayhem is Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, who have just proven to <laughs> be like, yes, yeah. who have just proven. And the fact that there's no rock songs in it is just insane. But the the fact that they with like Ice Cube as your and no ice cube song weird oh no that, not one that's okay that's lose a bottle cap i'm gonna stick to one the fact that it should have been no vaseline <laughs> <laughs> kids would love that <laughs> the, the fact that you have co- like a composer on it means like you were looking at where to put these in there is there's an uh, there's a thought process of where this belongs in the movie and i do think like you couldn't put party up in that action sequence. You could put Annie up in it. There's certain things that can switch out, but I I, yeah. I have to make a case for the cheat code soundtrack because it's an amazing soundtrack. Like and we it don't is, as as a collection of songs. That's a big tape. And that's we don't a, we don't get soundtracks like this anymore. We get scores no. more more often, but that's because they they hire a composer to be like I'm making a score, and this seems but like that. That's why it's important to dis- to identify whether it's just a collection of songs or if it's how they use them. Because if it's how they use them, it's annoying, right? It's it's that's more Team Seven. But if we're talking about the collection of songs, it's more mm-hmm. mayhem. So, so it's like All right, I'll give it to you. It's it's a the soundtrack and how it's used in the movie. Because ultimately, okay, so, this is what so drives TMNT, TMNT gets two then. That's what I have yours. I'm still going one one because I may have me may have I'll give one because the ones that do hit hit well, but then the ones who don't hit, it's like eh. Because TMT has missed opportunities, but when they do hit it, they hit it hard. And I love everything about Mutant Mayhem, but that's aimed. But if you're, if, that's but aimed if, for, if, it's if, not aimed for the movie. Like no, this, exactly. This, that's the thing. But if but if you if you hand me both tapes and go, which one do you? I'm taking Mutant Mayhem tape every time. You don't every time. You don't want to listen to Black Betty. It's not that I don't listen to Black Betty, but I listen to everything <laughs> else on the <laughs> like. Every, I love Black Betty. It's a it's a big tune. You don't you don't want some POD back in your life? I don't listen to POD. You don't like, listen. I'm gonna play Youth of the Nation at the end of this. I, I feel so alive. If if, if you edit this, you have to add Youth of a Nation to the end of this because that's essentially we what we're saying. <laughs> That was everywhere. Oh my gosh. Boom, here comes the boom ready. Okay. Sing like POD songs? Because POD had its moment and it, did have, yeah, it was it, it, it was in 2007. Okay. So we reached the end. I have to do some tallying because we've gone through our six uh sections and now we have scores for all of them. I have to add them up. Do that because I got a fun fact about Please do. Add in your fun facts, and then I'm going to ask you, actually, now, if you can rank these specific two in the pantheon of live-action uh, Ninja Turtle movies, which is That'll also be fun. Movies, so go That'll ahead and do fun. that. 
There's a little thing about TMNT 07. I don't know if you knew this, but a trilogy was planned. Ooh. A trilogy for these movies was planned. And what happened? This would have been great. Well, the yeah, it would have been really cool. Um, what happened was it wasn't that the movie wasn't successful because it did well, but the um, the company went tits up, and they went tits up off of da, 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 Astro Boy in 2010. Wow, that they made Astro Boy, and it yikes. sunk the studio. That was not a good movie. No, I never was. I never saw, it, but we can. It's based on a comic, so that'd be yeah, cool. We made Bottle what's interesting. We made what's across, interest- across the page that with uh, Mega Man. Oh, that's good. oh, we have that written down didn't we? somewhere. Probably. That'd be a cool one. What I will send you, I will send you something because there was actually a poster, con- a concept poster that leaked after it was all canceled for the second movie, and it looks like this, and it's a picture of Mikey over top of like looking over three turtles that are now turtles Mm -hmm. again like actual turtles with the headbands around so it was almost implied implied that maybe they revert back to reptiles somehow amphibians no the reptiles and then in the back but only mikey was left so you got like a last ronin type thing he's the only one left and then in the background you see the face of what looks like the shredder i say a link on on zoom there if you want to check it out but it's that's a official that was going to happen uh, as the second movie, but it just never happens. So like, all right, this came out. Now the plot of it, because it was originally going to be a trilogy, um, but what the idea was, the second one was going to be focused on Michelangelo, who feels that he wasn't being taken seriously. Uh, so he so he ends up joining the Foot Clan, oh, which wow. is kind of weird. But that's yeah, really that 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 that's that's I, legit. I that, like the art for that poster. It looks cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, so he kind of he kind of does like a a one eighty similar to City Fall, what Leo did. Okay, but then he comes back, and then the third movie would have had the Triceratons. Oh, that would have been amazing. Which are the alien race that try? Yes. Yeah, the third was that was the plan. There was Charles that was time, that was as tightly laid out, but it was going to be about Donatello making some sort of mistake, and the Technodrome like tore through a dimension and brought out so. The fact is, when you when you know that, or if you believe that, then it kind of gives a justification, not a justification, but it kind of explains why in the first movie, Mikey and Donnie are kind of in the background, because the second movie is supposed to be a Mikey movie, and the third yeah. movie is going to be a Donnie movie. It's kind of cool when you when you lay it out, it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then the it's just so unfortunate that the studio went bankrupt over a different property yeah it's just like so we gotta start the crowdfunding now because the tally has come in sir and coke you love mutant mayhem with a score of five bottle caps okay out of a possible 12 bottle caps like we're going for the Ooh. yeah this is a 12 case sir. this is we're trying to go for 12 case and you love tmnt 07 eight bottle caps so you getting drunk on tmnt 07 really? yes wow. I thought, I thought it was going to be like one difference. I didn't realize it was going to be three. Going over to your friend Dang, Mutant Mayhem with seven and TMNT 07 with eight. Oh, no way. You got me on the soundtrack. The soundtrack, the soundtrack is what would have put it over. But if we're being real, it's what pulls it back. Um, but I think we're both fans even more so of the films. I mean, no film is without flaw. But these yeah. are, again, several great additions to a franchise of movies that aren't great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you get them, man, that's that hurts. That's just what I never it is. Thought about that until you just well, said it. Well, now you can do the ranking. Where do you rank these with the other live, the other five live action movies that we have? The 1990s Teen Men, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, 1991 Secret of the Ooze, 1993's Turtles Three, which is when they go. Time Travel to Japan, then the reboot, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014, and then Out of the Shadows 2016. Where do you slot in TMNT 06? Oh, sorry, 07, and then Mutant Mayhem's 2023. Okay, so 1989 or 1990, I can't remember what year the movie came out. That's number one. Easy. Yep. Easy peasy for me. Uh, Seeker of the Use is probably two. Wow. 
Okay. I think it's too. I but my problem is I'm that movie's very nostalgic for me because we watched. I watched it as an adult and I like it less. But when I remember as a kid, I was like, "There's so many lines there that looks like Raph. Yeah, a little too Raph. Like it was just. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show my bias there. Fair. I think number three would be 2007. Okay. Um. Do you still have? What comes after that? Traveling in time, and then two Michael Bay's. Mutant Mayhem would be number four. Okay. I think, yeah. Uh, it's got to be. Yeah, oh. it's got to be. It's got to be because it's not better. It's not worse than the the Bay, the Bay movies. And the Teenage Mutant Turtles three, I haven't seen in so long. I can't I wait. I can't wait to bottle cap it with you. But we remember. I remember that movie being. I remember being disgusted by like the new. Suits, oh, suits and like and oh man. And like what it's like, as a kid i was like what casey jones gets to shine in it and he shouldn't um it's not yeah. great but we have to bottle cap it at this point we have to but i don't remember it so what i'm gonna say is i'm gonna say i'm gonna say out of the shadows five here you go smart move then turtles three and then 2014 turtles yeah okay, you got the the same bottom half of mine but i go original 1990s then i go based on these new scores tmnt uh, 2007, number two. Mm-hmm. Secret of the I Ooze. Probably would, I probably do like that one more, yeah. but we'll, let's just. I'm gonna stick to what I. Do. Secret of the Ooze, uh, number three. Mutant Mayhem, number four. Out of the Shadows, five. Number three, uh, at six, and then Ninja Turtles, Michael Bay reboot. Ugly, ugly turtles uh, as last in the line of number seven. It's not. It's it amazing. This franchise has lasted 40 years, and there's really only one and a half. Solid films. Everything else is a grain of salt. And you know what's interesting is that first movie, it was dark and, and stuff. It actually the the change in tone from the first movie, to, and I'm sure I said this before, was because a lot of parents complained. Really, they changed the tone from the, that's why the first one and the second one are so vastly different because they're like, well, I don't want my kids watching this. this is too serious. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. But so they go like, all right, we'll make it more goofy. But they were using Jim Henson, Jim Henson, and like the the, the Muppet yeah. production and all that stuff to yeah. like make these suits Same. and everything. Yeah, yeah. they treat they look, them. They look, they look terrific. Yeah. They use still hold up now. Like I've they, I watched the first one like almost every year, pretty much. They they treat them like monsters, right? In in terms of the reveal isn't until like halfway through the movie, right? And yeah, you see the, the thing. Oh, at the beginning, the first one's crazy. Yeah. I lost, I lost. I'm gonna get it back. I'm gonna get it back. I lost. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Raph's always like, damn. Yeah, it's good. Anything else you want to say on this? I had fun doing it. Yeah, this is this is this is fun. It's been a while. We haven't done a full episode since our last one in August, which was number eighty, Enter the Scrolls, and that wasn't as fun to talk about. As oh my one. god! <laughs> we found a way not to talk about that immediately. But before that, we did number seventy nine, which was Spider Verse Satility, which is all about uh, across the Spider Verse. I'm interested to see what we uh, that out. do the. 12 pack challenge for again, right? Like when we just take two movies and build out a scorecard. Cause I think this will yeah. work. Uh, yeah. This is fun. This was hashtag, this was hashtag nerdle turtle. Cause you can see that all over. Nerdle place. turtle. Oh, no, I got nothing else to say. I, uh, it was fun. I'm glad I got, we got to talk about them. So in depth, that's good. It was a good idea. This was, this was, this was Dang's idea. Do the, do the, the, the combative ranking. Nobody cares. Oh. 